Hey, welcome back, guys. Um, I've had a lot of questions, um, comments. So I thought we would just do a quick review for people that are kind of new to the small block forward world. I've been messing with these cars since the about 99. Um, I got quite a bit of experience in small block forwards. So we're just gonna do a quick rundown. I'm gonna tell you kind of the basics, uh, mild, moderate, and then your more step up. So um, most of y'all know the Ranger is a 92 um, stock bottom end box body 5.0. Um, it's pretty well worn. Uh, it's, it came out of a buddy's car. I think I've said before, it had like 120 or so when he gave it to me. He actually gave me the bottom end. Uh, it was in his Fox. It first had nitrous. Uh, Craig Mays, awesome guy. Shout out to him. Uh, but I was needing the motor. He just gave me this bottom end basically. Uh, it had nitrous on it for a couple years and then he stuck a uh, Vortex supercharger uh, on top of it. I think eight or 10 pounds of boost. The car made 412 with stock heads and a, I think an F cam or an E cam. I think it was an E cam and the Explorer intake. So the car made 412 with the wheels for many, many, many years. He started noticing the little blow by. Uh, he ended up just buying another motor. I didn't do anything to freshen up the bottom end whatsoever. I uh, literally just took the motor to my builder and said, look, it's a play toy. I don't care if it puffs a little smoke out the breather. Um, so this is a very basic combo that pretty much anybody can afford. This motor, like I said, had like 120 to 130 on it when I got it. It was free. Uh, my builder had a $50 B303 cam definitely not the best cam in the world for performance but they do sound good and that's what i was after just something that sounded good um maybe perform slightly better than stock so i put the b303 cam in it um, head wise that's where you get most of your power i didn't want to spend a ton of money again uh, with this being a um, budget build so i bought a set of uh, skip white 190 cc aluminum heads they were 699 dollars off ebay I've had about three different buddies run these heads. Uh, people will say they're Chinese junk and there's a million things people comment about them. Basically, I've had zero issues. I've probably put 25,000 miles on this motor this year. Uh, my builder says they're good quality. Uh, are they uh, extreme performance head? No, you're not gonna make 600 horsepower with these heads. Um, but they come pre-assembled with good valves and good valve springs if you look them up. Uh, only thing I had to buy was a set of cheap roller rockers. I want some Scorpion off eBay, um, 1.6s. And then I used a Edelbrock air gap intake. That's a little heat out, nothing really major performance wise. And a quick fuel 650 carb. Super simple setup. I probably got $1,500 in that entire motor, if that, and that's, that's what the builder putting it together. Like I said, $700 heads. $100, $120 rockers, I don't know what they were, and um, a $50 cam that was used. Roller cams don't really go bad unless something happens, they, they last for a long time. Uh, I put it to a, a stock T5. If you're not racing every day, I've had lots, this, this Mustang made 640 horsepower with a T5 for multiple years. I didn't race it, but it held up until I beat on it. Um, so that T5's been in there, it's out of a V6 Mustang. Uh, I swapped the input shaft to a Fox body to make it work uh, in a Fox body bell housing. I, I bang third gear consistently with a uh, 285 rear tire and 410s. I'm, I consistently hit third gear and um, took it to the track several times. It's fine. It, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend power shifting third. Back to the motor though. Um, so this motor, like I said, is, is pretty wore out. It's got quite a few miles. <clears throat> I've got a setup where it doesn't really puff, but I've kind of cheated and run the PCB out the back. It's, it's a long story, but um, the valve, well, the breathers, one of the breathers out the back. It, it does puff a little smoke on a long hill. I've drove it to Gatlinburg from my house, which is four and a half hours. Um, I don't know how many miles, so it's four and a half hour trip. It's 75 or 80. I've drove it to Bowling Green, which is a, an hour and a half trip multiple times. Uh, it, the, the truck doesn't use any oil, really. I mean, the amount of smoke it, it puffs is minimal. So it's not using oil. I changed the oil every 3,000 miles, it's fine. Uh, it doesn't even have a dipstick. Uh, I measure the oil out when I drain it. Uh, it's always close to five quarts. Um, 
to, as far as numbers go, this truck, the way it sits, has got an HEI distributor uh, for ease, simplicity, and a 50 or $60 Edelbrock inline fuel pump. Uh, the truck made 200 and I think 91 or 93, I don't remember, 290 some horsepower and 310 or 12 foot pounds of torque at the wheels on a Mustang Dyna. Not setting the world on fire, but comparatively, it's not bad numbers for a worn out engine with, like I said, cheap, cheap parts. The combination is super reliable. Like I said, it has air conditioning. I drive it every day that it's nice. This truck was built to drive. I keep it as close to pristine as I can. I wash it pretty much every day. I just got done washing it. Um, it's been raining the last couple of days, so I haven't been driving it. But uh, as far as reliability goes, I sit in traffic uh, every day with it. I leave the AC on, the truck runs between 160 and 180 degrees. On the hottest of hot days in the drive through it might run 190. It's got two cheap 10 inch fans and a stock Explorer uh, radiator. No fancy cooling system, 160 degree thermostat. Um, I drove it in Gatlinburg, we went to Ponies in the Smokies, set all day long, in and out of traffic, no hiccups. That carburetor is the key. Um, I've had multiple carburetors over the years. That, haul, uh, that uh, quick fuel, 650, um, it's a, I'm trying to think of it, I think it's a mechanical secondary. Anyways, whatever, um, works flawlessly. I did very little adjustment. The only thing I did was adjust the idle reachment. Um, when I took it to the dyno, I did nothing to it. I just stuck it on the dyno. Um, so, like I said, 290 and 300 at the wheel. Um, truck runs I, it kept, it's, to give you an idea the truck weighs 2980 pounds i think with uh hardly any gas like 3020 without me in it full tank of gas as it sits right now on these tires and wheels so it's fairly light 300 ish rear oil horsepower it will outrun most um stock uh challenger or charger rts i've ran against it'll pull away from them a car or so two cars depending on the driver and, you know, conditions and me and blah, blah, blah. Um, as far as SRTs go, I've ran three different SRT uh, Challengers. I don't know if they're six speeds. I know one was, I heard turping gears. They pull like a car, a car and a half. Um, I know they're heavy and they're not the fastest thing in the world, but they're also 400 and some horsepower versus this 300. The power to weight ratio works great. Um, it still runs pretty quick. I will probably eventually, when I upgrade the motor in this, I'll go to a, a I probably ain't gonna go to a custom cam, but I will definitely go to something like the Mustang has now, like a Trick Flow Stage 2. It's a more uh, updated, better revving, higher revving cam. The cam really limits this setup, but again, it does sound good. It does, um, it does idle good. It runs great. It, it idles at like 700, 750. Um, I can drive it anywhere. So that's the basics on a, easy cheap small block forward let's uh move on here so also you know the mustang there's been many videos about it um cars fairly well known in the sn community there's nothing here that sets the world on fire either this this motor um is a stock block ft 4e however you say it roller um 351 it's it's out of a van uh, I took this to Jamie Mattingly in Bargetown, Kentucky. He does all of my motor work, the Ranger, the Mustang, the motor on the stand. He does all my friends. I've, I don't know how many friends I've sent to him now. So, uh, like I said, big shout out to Jamie Mattingly. The dude is, um, he's a young guy. His family has been in the motor building business for years. This guy's a small block Ford. Um, he's a guru, buddy. I mean, he, if you need to know about small block Fords or, most motors in general, but especially small off forge, this guy is it. Um, I asked him what I needed to do to make six to 700 horsepower because 10 years ago, that was still fairly decent horsepower when I built this. Um, what a lot of people don't understand is uh, this motor has been in this car for 10 years. Uh, anybody that knows me, if you watch my videos, I am not easy on this car in any way, shape or form. This motor is a, like I said, a roller uh, block. It has a stock crank. It has a set of H-beam Eagle rods. It has good bearings, uh, all ARP hardware throughout. I used all ARP, oil pump shaft, all boats. Um, it has 
uh, forged TRW, old school forged TRW disc piston. pistons. This car is like an eight and a half to one motor. Um, definitely, you know, back when I was building E85 really wasn't a thing yet. Um, you could get it very limited, but I didn't want to have to run race gas. So I wanted it to be a pump gas car and it was for the longest time. Um, but this motor, uh, I run it off E85 now, uh, just so I could turn the boost up and get a little more timing in it. Uh, head wise, still nothing, nothing fancy here. A set of, uh, old school Canfield 192s. Um, anybody that knows anything about Canfields, they were a good head back in the day. Technology has came a very long way since these Canfield heads. Um, they still flow decent. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but a lot of old school racers used them. I think some still do, but there's 192s, 195s. These are 192s. Uh, some people say they're prone to cracking. Maybe, I don't know. I've got 1.6 roller rockers on it. Uh, Trick Flow Stage 2 cam, nothing special. I think I, I gave a hundred bucks for it. It was still it was new, but it was in the box. Uh, never been used. Alpha Buddy. Um, I do have good valve springs and everything in the heads. I had Jamie go through them and uh, mill them. Uh, I think he did 10 thousandths. Um, check them for cracks, the whole nine yards, put them together. He assembled this motor also. Uh, it has um, trick flow box, upper and lower intake, R, 90 millimeter throttle body, three inch tubing, neck down to two and a half for the blower. It's a uh, Vortec SI, cheap blower. You could get them. When I bought that one, I paid 1300 bucks and it was brand new in the box. The guy had mounted it, didn't, didn't want to go supercharger because all his buds, buddies went turbo. He never ran it, took it back off, put it back in the box. I bought the whole kit for 1300 bucks. Um, you can't really get any cheaper than that. It's a V3, it's self-contained. Uh, I put that on there. I overspin the hell out of it. It has been on there. That blower has been on there. It had a S trim and then I went to that about six years ago. Uh, I run a 2.75 upper with a stock lower. Um, again, nothing special. Same belt for like seven years. I've never shredded a belt. I replaced one belt because it was kind of looking shitty about seven years ago. It's still in there. It probably needs to be upgraded because it's old and it's probably brittle at this point. I, I don't see any drop in boost when I'm running. Um, but this combo with that setup and E85 made 642 and 621 on Blankenship's Dino when I had a T5. I've done a few little small things about the timing and things like that up about four more degrees since it was at least he's super conservative amazing tuner i would recommend it. that's why the motor between jamie and and lee that's why it's lived this long uh it's it's had a hard life this thing has in the first five or six years i street raced all the time uh it was nothing to do 130 140 mile an hour pull in the interstate um you can look back on some of my videos on my channel uh, my buddy's 530 horsepower vet it just gone walks away the torque this thing makes is unbelievable um especially for a low compression motor with very basic parts. This car made uh, 520 some foot pounds at 3000 and just kept climbing. On the street with this small blower, uh, it really needs a bigger blower, but on the street, it's amazing. It's instantaneous. There is no lag. There's absolutely nothing. Everybody that rides in it is amazed at how fast the power comes on. Is it the fastest car on the street? Absolutely not, not nowadays. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff faster, we all know that. Um, I mentioned before the car's been the track one time ever. Never had it before to a track. I unloaded the car, made three true street passes. It went 1090, 1070, 1053 uh, in the heat of the day, back to back runs. I, I guesstimate the car is a low 10 second car um, with not 210 degree coolant temps and not sitting in line all day if it was just a code pass because it doesn't have an intercooler or anything. So it starts pulling time and after it gets hot, but I really feel like it would go 10, 10, 10, 20 on a good day. It trapped like 131, 132 on the best pass. Um, and I had belt slip for sure. The a guy told me he thought that he was hearing some belt slip. The car was nosing over. Sure enough, got it back to the pits after the third round and looked and the hood had uh, belt slip on it. I checked the tension earlier. It wasn't tight. So I tightened it up. It hadn't probably been done in three years. Um, again, that motor, I drive it in traffic. It has AC, it has heat. We take it out during the winter and go, uh, I mean, we went and got groceries in it. We go to dinner in it. Uh, I've sat in traffic for 45 minutes to an hour on the interstate going to Bowling Green. Um, 
any of my buddies that will vouch the car is as streetable as a street car can get. AC works, heat works, power windows work, cruise uh, worked until I went to the 90 millimeter. I had cruise on it. Uh, it sets 185 to 190 most days. It'll get to 205 if I turn the air on on a hot, hot day. Um, super basic. I don't want to jinx myself, and I've said this multiple videos. The car has had the valve covers off twice, once to adjust the rockers and once to check the rockers uh, in all those years. I've replaced the intake gasket this year and pulled the injectors just because they hadn't been done, and I figured it, with all that boost, it probably needed to be done. The car makes 15-ish pounds of boost. Um, again, most anybody on any budget can build this motor in a year or so. Find you a cheap supercharger, cheap set of heads. Boost don't care. It'll, it'll as long as you've got a, some airflow, it'll it'll make horsepower. Um, I've never popped a head gasket. I've never had any major issues in whatsoever. I think that's 90% the tune. Um, I keep, I check the 85 every so often to make sure I'm getting good at E85. I, I don't dog the car, but I, I don't run it easy. I check the plugs, make sure they're burning good, keep good plug wires on it. I run auto light or um, NGK TR6s, uh, gap tight at 28 thousandths. Um, nothing here is, is super um, expensive or exotic. It's a, it's a pretty basic setup. Moving on. So that's, you know, that's kind of that. Moving on, I keep picking this camera. This uh, motor, I think I showed you, it's, it's under this pile of clothes over here. I keep it covered up. Now this motor here will be, um, this is a 383. Yes, I said 383. I know people are here. This is an old school stroker. You can see down in there. Um, that I had Mattingly built also. Uh, again, it's a roller block. Uh, People argue that they're good to 600, 700 horsepower. That's bullshit too. They're they're good for much more horsepower than six or 700. If you if you balance them right and and you know what you're doing, you keep the timing low and keep good fuel in them. Those motors will handle upwards of 850, uh, 900 if you're not racing it all the time. Multiple guys on the old school Lightning forums make a thousand with turbos. That motor, to be honest was built two years ago to go in the yellow car, um, but it keeps on trucking. So I had bought a 94 Cobra that had uh, that motor in it. A guy had burnt a piston. It had a Novi 2000 and a TKO 600. I couldn't pass the deal up. I got an amazing deal on it. So I bought the car, parted the car out, sold the roller, kept the motor. Uh, took the motor, bought a new set of pistons, new bearings, it had a forge crank. So that's gonna be a, a 383, 10 and a half to one, roughly, depending on the chambers, uh, 10 and a half to one compression. That will get uh, a set of probably AFRs or something similar, uh, some kind of big trick flow high port, something like that. It will get a custom cam. Um, I fully expect to run uh, a YSI when I go to that, at that point. You're getting into a lot more money at that point, but so, that should make 800 plus at the wheel. If it doesn't, there's gonna be a problem. If this makes 640, that should make 800. That's a lot, lot stouter motor. I plan on turning it a lot higher. This car, I shut it down at 62 to 6400. I plan on spending that well over 7,000. Um, airflow and RPMs and fuel, you know, everybody knows that's the mixture to, to get, get horsepower. So that motor um, will eventually make its way into something here. Uh, if I don't buy something else, I love building these little things. Um, I love building projects. Uh, I get bored as soon as I don't have something to do. So right now I'm kind of in my head thinking, what can I do next? Um, but that kind of gives you a rundown. This motor 1500, I've got, believe it or not, most of these parts are sourced from buddies and trading. I, I added it up one day between the, the motor build, the heads, the supercharger, and uh, the motor itself. Now I'm not talking about tuning or any of those things. I've got roughly 4,500 to $5,000 on that motor. Um, I don't think performance wise you can beat it. The, the car performs for what it is. It weighs 3,200 pounds. It performs great. I've had it on the scale with 3,210. I think is what it weighed. Um, 3,190, it was 3,190. Uh, the way it sits, almost empty on gas. So 
it's not light, not super heavy. Um, but I just want to kind of give you all some rundown on what you can do and kind of how you can start out, how you can go. So 300, 600, 800, however you want to do it, know your budget, get a plan together. I do highly suggest, um, unless you've built motors in the past, I've had buddies that on their third and fourth build, uh, they try to tune them themselves. Great, if you can tune it yourself, learn how to do it. I'm not that guy, I'm not gonna learn how to tune it. Uh, take it to somebody, spend the four or 500 bucks and let them tune that car and, and get it to where it needs to be so that you can safely and reliably drive that car every time you go out and not have to worry about it. Uh, my buddies are great guys, but I've seen them lift heads and pop pistons. And if you don't know that stuff, the tuning is coming a long way, I get it. Uh, I may go that route eventually, but for the 500 bucks or whatever Lee charges, 400 bucks, to me, it's 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 like insurance. Um, Carbureted, it, people hate on it. That drivability of that truck is every bit as good as this car. Uh, does it burn more gas? Absolutely. It, it you know it's not a gas saver. It gets uh, I added it up. It gets 17 to 18 miles to a gallon on the interstate. Three or with a three four tens. I'm sorry, it has four tens now. It had three seventy three. So four tens of T five, three thousand RPM on the interstate, like seventy five. This car. We've checked it multiple times. On E85, it gets 14.5, and on pump gas, it gets almost 19 miles a gallon with the 355 and the overdrive. If I just stay out of throttle, it gets close to 19 miles a gallon on the interstate. Um, better gas mileage, yes. Drivability, this son of a bitch starts without a choke. I only have the choke hooked up. This thing starts dead of winter, hottest day in the summer barely touch the gas it fires right up it never makes a full revolution um it actually starts easier than the mustang on e85 uh, the mustang still starts easy but that thing is dead nuts on so if y'all have any questions like comment uh subscribe uh, you know if you have any questions you want me to talk about in the future I'm glad to help i'm not an expert but i do have quite a bit of experience in this stuff um thanks again love you guys